Hey everybody, Captain Lewis Hall again. Uh, today we're going to go over something that probably a lot of people don't even know how to do, because they probably never had to do it. Right? A friend of mine brought me a nice little rifle with a Marlin Model 60 Golden Trigger Edition. He told me that there was a problem with it, and uh, I was going to go through this and show you what the problem was, but I decided that probably wasn't the best idea, because if you know there's a problem with a gun, don't shoot it. It can be dangerous. Okay? Anyhow, the gun that we're talking about is this little guy right here. Let's see if we can get him up in the sight a little. Okay, this is the model uh, 60 Golden Trigger Edition. It's called Golden Trigger Edition because the trigger itself is actually gold. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip this thing down, clean it up good, and we're going to let you see exactly how you go about doing that, what all you're going to need to do that, and hopefully you'll learn how to take care of your weapons a little bit better than most people do. Not a hard thing to do, just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. All right, I'm going to probably stay out of frame for the most part here, because this isn't about me, it's about the weapon and what it takes to take care of this weapon. Right? We're going to need just a couple of simple basics. We're going to need a cleaning kit, which I have right here. We're going to need some rags, preferably some cotton swabs, some sort of a gun oil. Preferably, you know, I use REM oil because it works good to clean everything up. All right, and you're going to need a couple of different screwdrivers, a couple of flatheads, and a Phillips. All right, it's very simple. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, magazine tube out so you can see that we're not loaded. Okay, this is your magazine tube. We're going to clean that up as well. I can't pull the spring out of it because it has a little, little teeny tiny roll pin here that actually works as the lock in the stock. Okay. So we're going to leave that all intact. I'm just going to clean it up the best I can and it's going to go back in. All right. First thing you want to do is you want to flip it over. When you flip it over, take a flathead screwdriver, one of these little guys. You got a screw underneath here. Okay. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but hopefully you can see it pretty well. You're going to take this screw out and go get into it. Okay, kind of bear with me. It takes a few seconds to pull it apart. Make sure you don't lose your parts. Then you have a Phillips in the back. Oops, you got the Phillips here. Take the Phillips out of the back behind the trigger guard. All right, that's going to release, for the most part, most of what you got to deal with. All right. Take that over here. I'll put these up on the top here so I don't lose track of them. And if you notice, there's two screws right here, one on the back and one on the front of the actual trigger guard. Both of them are flathead screws. The back screw is the one you want to release. All right? Don't worry about the front screw just yet. We're going to take the back screw out. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to lift the stock and the trigger guard with the trigger away from the barrel and the chamber. Okay? So now we have an open barrel and an open chamber. Now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, so we're going to come out of focus here, and I'm going to bring it in so you can look at it. Okay, now we have our exposed chamber with our bolt and our bolt lever. All right? We're not going to strip it down all the way, because in order to do that, I'd have to take off a couple of little C-clamps here, or little uh, C-clips, and some pins to pull the trigger assembly out. So what we are going to do is we're going to take the breech apart so we can take everything out and you can see what's going on. In the back here, and give me this little screwdriver and I'll use this as my pointer, okay? In the back here, we have this little itty bitty, it looks like it's a screw, but it's really not. It's actually a pin with a uh, slotted head in it, okay? So what we're going to do, let's move this up out of the way for a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to push this through, all right? And it pulls out the back side. Put your hands over top of it because it will be spring loaded. Okay, we'll put that up there with the other one. And now you can lift your entire assembly out. Now you have your bolt exposed. We're going to set this off to the side for a minute. I don't know. Let's take a look at this. This is pretty dirty. Okay, we'll run my finger across here. You can see there's a lot of crud on, these, on my finger here. All right, let's get it in focus there. 
that's just barely touching this thing. It has not been cleaned up. It's only kind of neglected it. But we're going to take care of it. We're going to clean it all up for you. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to release your uh, bolt and you want to take your charging handle out at the same time. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to take the charging handle and you're going to slide it back just a little bit. The front of the bolt will start to lift up. Lift up the front of the bolt, take the charging handle out, okay, lay it off to the side, and pull your bolt. Be very careful when you pull the bolt. It does have an active spring in it. It is not a captive spring. The spring will come out. So we're going to take the spring out and we're going to lay it aside. So now we have the bolt. And if you look at the bolt, it's pretty, I don't know, yucky. <laughs> okay? For lack of a better word, it's pretty yucky. There is a lot of carbon buildup in here. There's a lot of dirt in here, a lot of debris. So we're going to start with that and we're going to clean it out. All right, let me get something to put down here to capture all this dirt and debris. Put my nice little rag down there. Now, we're going to take, I usually use Q-tips because it's easier to get them in and out of the places. So we're going to take just a couple of dry Q-tips first. And if you look in the bolt, you have a couple of machine slots here. Okay, Just take a dry Q-tip and clean them slots out. Get some of that loose debris out of there. You see how that is? That's pretty bad. Okay, So we're going to get some of that out of there first. All right. The less you have to use the penetrating oils on, the better. At least one thing I can see just from cleaning this that the firing pin is still pretty free in there. All right, there's a small pin on the side here. All right, let me get my little pointer again. There's a small pin right here on the side. All right, you see that little pin right there? That little roll pin will push through and allow you to take the uh, firing pin out of the bolt. But you don't really want to do that because, well, Unless you have an armor block and the right tools, it's going to be very difficult for you to do that. Alright, so let's get this all cleaned up nice and clean here. Get some of this debris out of here. Get it cleaned off. Oh, that is ugly. Okay. I'm going to hit it again. And this is one of the most critical parts to keep cleaned up is this bolt. Because this bolt's what's actually doing all the work for you to fire the weapon. So we'll get the as much carbon off of this as we can just by using a Q-tip, a dry Q-tip. All right, scrub it out inside there. Got the water inside there yet. Okay, now that we got some of that carbon out of there, we want to use some sort of a um, uh, cleaning detergent, clean, not detergent, but a cleaning um, oil, a spray, something like that, something that will break through carbon that will make it a lot easier. Next thing you want to do is you want to grab you a nice clean piece of piece of cloth or rag of some sort. We're going to wipe down the entire bowl. Okay, get all the excess dirt and grease and grime off of it. And we're going to go inside and out on this. So we're going to get the whole thing cleaned up real nice. Clean out your, where your charging handle goes. Yep, we've got a lot of carbon right here, so we're going to take a clean one here and we're going to go to this. Try to get some of that carbon up out of there. All right. We've got a lot of it out right there. Get in that crack there, get it cleaned up. One of the things I'm going to use on this, and some people don't like to use them because it is steel and it can damage it, but if you're careful with it, you won't have too much of an issue. All right. I use a, a curved pick and a straight pick. Usually I use the straight side for anything that's flat like this right here. Okay, so you can get on this flat surface and clean it up. Now I use the curve pick to get in these little tiny holes to get everything loosened up in there and get it pulled out. Okay, and same thing's true with down inside here where the uh, spring goes. All right, so we'll get that cleaned out a little bit there, get some of that grime out of it. Okay, I may cut away from time to time and come back whenever I'm done with things. And then I'll show them to you whenever I'm done cleaning them. So that way I don't have to take up too much of your time. of the things that we're looking at are one 
a nice stiff bristle blunt and two this is the pick I was speaking of if you look at this end it's curved okay it's got a little hook on it the other end here is just flat with a blade on it okay I use that to be able to just gently scrape off the carbon buildup in places that are kind of hard to get to like right inside the bolt okay down in a little thin slot and on the sides here where you can't get to it too easy you kind of clean up some of that and just polish it up nice and before we're done. This little piece right here, I'm going to point it out to you, this right here is the ejector, okay? It actually runs from both sides. If you watch when I do this, it will move back and forth. Alright, that's what's going to pull the spent round out and get rid of it for you. So you want to make sure you got that nice and clean inside there, up underneath it, all that stuff, okay? You don't want to pull it out because, again, the little pins that hold it in place, it is spring-loaded. So the little pins that hold it in place, you may lose those and you don't want to do that. Okay, now I got it cleaned up pretty well, and it looks a lot better than it did. I don't have all those little dark, heavy spots on it. It's been a lot of wear on this gun, so it's been shot a good bit, right? Once you get it all cleaned up, what I usually do is I'll take some gun oil, okay? I'll take a little bit of gun oil, and I'll put gun oil on it, and I'll clean it up to get that excess carbon off of it, right? Work it down good. Get the excess oil off of it because you don't want too much on there. Otherwise, it'll just capture more of the uh, unspent powder whenever you fire it the next time. All right? You don't want to give it too much to fix you. Now, like I said, you can see there's a lot of wear marks right here where the bolt slides, and right here, and right here. It's, it's kind of pitted a little bit, okay? And if you look on the front side of it, you can see the real shiny marks here and here where it slides up and down, okay? As well as a little short rail here and here. All right, that's where it's sliding across the bottom of the chamber. Or the, I'm sorry, the, the, um, the upper receiver, all right? So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of gun to, uh, gun, gun to grease. So we're just going to put a little dab of grease on the front here, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of wipe it in there with my finger. I'm going to leave it a little bit heavier than what some people might think. But what that's going to do is it's going to reduce a lot of that friction in there so that bolt's going to slide real nice. All right, then we'll flip it over, and on the bottom rails, we'll just put some on the bottom there too. So that way we got a nice surface for it to slide across and it doesn't do any damage to the gun. You get a little on the side, that's no big deal. Just kind of rub it in there with your finger to, so that way you don't have it globbed. And it's going to give you a little bit of, I don't know, lubrication for the bolt to slide up and down inside the um, receiver. Okay, so now we got the top done. Alright, sides. Get that all wiped down a little bit. Here, take a little bit of that off of there. It's a little bit too much on the side. Down with that side. And the bottom looks pretty good. Alright, so now we got it greased up. So we're going to set it aside for now. And then after we're done with the receiver, we will put the bolt in. So I'm going to lay it on the side. All right, now we're going to take the upper receiver. Now the upper receiver is going to take a lot of that uh, grime and gunk. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, again, the dry Q-tip. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the spots that you can't reach with a rag. And we're just going to kind of go down in the corners of it. All right. You see how much is coming out of there? I mean, it's pretty dirty in there. So we'll go in here and we'll do the corners of it with the Q-tip. If you get a lot of real heavy buildup, you want to go ahead and go in there with your uh, your pick. All right, get that loosened up in there. Another thing that's going to happen with this is as we do this with the uh, Q-tip, we put just a drop of oil in there to help break that up a little bit. Work as a solvent for it. 
And we'll take another Q-tip in there. We'll start breaking up some of that carbon that's built up on the top there. Oh yeah, there it comes. Break it up in the front there by where the breech and the barrel come together. One of the things I do recommend when you're doing this, you want to have as much light as possible because low light conditions make it difficult for you to be able to uh, see exactly what's going on. So what I do, I have this neat little flashlight here and it is bright. So we're going to go down inside here and we're going to see how much we got built up in there. Oh yeah. Up against where the barrel joins up with the upper receiver, it is pretty nasty. So let's get all that crud built out. You know, dug out of there. Let me use a pick and get some of that out of there because there's a lot in there. Oh, it's coated in there, man. It's just peeling off the side. Yeah, I'm, I uh, honestly I'm glad I didn't take this to shoot to tell you what the uh, malfunction was because I'm not too sure it would have shot. I'm pretty sure that uh, it might have blown up on me. Because it's in bad shape. Get this break off here. Get that cake on, stuff down. Just give me an idea. You can see how much is built up on that. That's, that's a flat pick. You see that big ball? That's all carbon built up on the inside of that chamber. So we'll get all that cleared out of there. Didn't do a whole lot of good. Let's just keep shooting the gun in this condition. Because all it's going to do is make it worse and it creates a danger to you. I'm not too sure about many people out there wanting to be hurt by their weapon. They're expecting that weapon to save them, not hurt them. We'll see them. <laughs> All right, we're back. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is much cleaner. I mean, that thing was black. Now we got it cleaned up. Now on the bottom here, you're going to see there is, I don't know how well you can see it, but on the edges, there are little tiny rails that run along this edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on those just to uh, help assist the bolt a little bit. Alright, so we'll take a little bit of our grease. Just put a little on there. Run it up that rail a little bit. Don't need a lot. Just a little bit. Just enough to keep it from being dry. Okay. So now we got that done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run a bore snake down through the bore just to take anything out of the barrel. The barrel, I looked at it with a light. The barrel actually looks fairly decent. So we're going to run the bore snake in here. Okay. Take my wadding, put it up in there. Alright, and we're going to pull. Just gently pull until we get everything through. Yeah, yeah, we pulled some out of there. It wasn't too bad though. You know, it seemed a lot worse. So, we'll do that a couple of times. Put a different, put a clean rag in there, or put a clean patch in. Each time you do it, that way you know when you got a nice clean barrel. Alright? And then when the last thing you want to do is put a little bit of gun oil on a patch and run it down through. So that way you put a little bit of lubrication, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of lubrication in the barrel as well. Okay. And get that lined up and pull it through. Alright, let's get her through there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty pretty much white. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same one. We're going to run it through the magazine tube, all right? The magazine tube is the tube that runs on the bottom that you're going to obviously put your ammunition down in to feed it. So this is a semi-automatic rifle. All right, so we'll feed that in there. 
walk through the tube, pull it through there gently, and there, we got some out of the inside of that tube, so that, that's going to stop anything from binding in there. Now we're going to take a clean one, okay, take a clean pack. I usually use just the, uh, the small pack, and what size are these here, 2x2, two two, all right? I want a small caliber, you know, 223, 22 caliber, 17 HMR, anything like that. You don't want to use too big of a pack. If you're going to do a little bit bigger bore, you, want, you might want to go to a uh, three-inch pack, all right? I'm going to put a little bit of gun oil in this just to lightly lubricate the barrel. Plug that up so we don't spill it. And back to it with this. And what this will do by doing this is lubricate the barrel plus any small particles that may have been left behind that were missed before. It'll pick them up because the gun oil will grab it. And let's just set into the chamber, or into the barrel, I mean. There we go. Whoops. Get it in the barrel, pull it down through. And there we are. And we're good and clean. Got some oil in the barrel. So that's the uh, upper receiver in the barrel as well as the magazine completely clean. So now we're going to set this off to the side here. And we're going to start going after the trigger assembly. Alright, the trigger assembly is going to be a little more difficult because there's little tiny pieces in there so we don't want to tear it apart unless you have, like I said, a uh, armored block or you have all the right tools. You don't want to be tearing apart your trigger assembly because there's too many small pieces and springs that if one of them goes flying, you're not going to be able to find it and it's not going to, the gun won't function properly afterwards. So we just kind of wipe down the charging handle, set it off to the side. Now, let's take the, the stock and get it out of my way here. Okay, now we're going to work on the trigger assembly. Okay, now granted it may not look like your standard trigger assembly, but this is what's going to do all the work. This is your magazine feed right here okay this is what's going to allow you to feed that 22 caliber bullet up into it this is going to release your trigger these are all your springs to activate them okay we don't need to get into all the parts right now because you're not going to take them off unless you need to replace them if you need to replace them then we'll maybe make another video where we take them off and name everything so that way you know what parts you need and what they're actually called all right first thing i want to do is i want to take and just wipe down the outside of it Get all that excess stuff off of it. Get all the excess um, powder residue, any kind of oils or greases that may be there. Get that all cleaned up so that way you have at least somewhat of a cleaner surface to start working with. Okay, I'll flip it over to the other side now. Okay, that, that looks a lot better. Okay. And I'm thinking I'm seeing quite a bit of problem right here. No? Okay, that's all right. Never mind. Okay, we're going to get rid of this rag. And I'm going to grab another clean rag so that way I can get this cleaned up really well. All right. Let's go over some of the things that you got here. This little Teflon piece right here, okay? This has a little pin that holds it in. It rocks back and forth. What this is, that's actually your bolt buffer. Your bolt will come back against that. So you don't have a hard slamming effect against the uh, metal uh, upper receiver. Okay, so we're going to clean that up, get the crud off of that. Use a little bit of oil on it. And actually, what I want to do is I'm going to oil this whole thing up nice. And I'm going to use my uh, nylon brush. I don't like using wire on stuff like this because there are little springs in there that you can damage. But if you put, you know, just a couple of drops of oil here and there where you look, you know, you see a lot of build-up areas. The oil will penetrate the carbon and it'll break it up so that way you can clean it up easier. Alright? Any part that moves, you want to be very, you know, pay special attention to them, get that broken up. Like going here, okay? Uh, this is your locking block. In your locking block, there's pins that hold that in place. I could take that out and pull the whole locking block out, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some oil on there to break up the uh, carbon buildup on it and stuff. And then I'll use my pick and I'll clean all that off there and I'll blow it out and I'll run my brush across it to make it nice and clean. So we're going to go ahead and start doing this. And I'm going to let this soak for a little bit. As I'm doing this, I'm just going to kind of cut away here and I'll come back to you whenever I get it cleaned up pretty good. And 
you'll get to see the difference that it makes to have everything cleaned up, brushed out, get all that carbon off of there, and it's going to make the thing look a lot nicer. It's going to action, you know, the action will be a lot nicer, and the gun will function properly. All right. So here's what you're looking at right now. You can see all the dirt and grease and grime and gunk on it. Okay. So I'm going to cut away for a few minutes, clean this up, and then I'll be back. Okay, now that we got the board all nice and clean, or the uh, trigger assembly all nice and cleaned up, I'm hoping you can see that pretty well. It's nice and shiny now. Got all that grit and grime out of there. Cleans up the um, uh, feed ramps and everything. Got them nice and clean. The whole block is nice and clean. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and just carefully apply a little bit of oil, just very slightly, in some very critical parts so that we make sure that we don't bind them up again. A couple of the parts that you want to look at is actually your bolt release. So what we want to do is put just a drop in here, put a drop up here where the spring goes, and then down here where it attaches to the spring. Okay? So that'll make it nice and loose in there, so that way that slide will work perfectly every time. Okay? Or I'm sorry, the bolt. Alright? The other place where we want to go with a uh, little bit of oil is this piece right here. It actually splits up. Okay, whenever it's it's for lack of a better word, the hammer. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that in the creases here and where this little disconnect is here, we want to make sure that we get some oil in there. Just a drop. Okay. A little bit. And a little bit down there. And that's going to allow that to slide nicely. Alright. So now, there you go. That's real nice and clean there now. Alright. So now, the next thing to do is start going back together with it. Okay. We cleaned everything up. We got it oiled up, lubed up nice. So now we're going to get back together. This is where it gets fun. Oh, there's one more thing I want to do before I put that all back together. Let's take this over here. I want to take my spring, my guide spring. Okay, It has a little guide rod in there. So we're going to take just a little tap. could be a used one, whatever. Just get that excess carbon and stuff off of that. Okay, so that way we got a little bit more movement with it and it's not going to bind. All right. So those are the things that you want to look at, you know, just make sure you get nice and free. Alright? You gotta be careful how you put this all back together, because if you look at it, well, let's look at this pin real close. Okay? You can see it's just a pin on one end and it's just a little itty bitty lip on this back end here. Alright? And that's what holds your spring. It's not a captive spring like what you see in a lot of your semi-automatic uh, pistols. Okay? So what this is going to do is it's going to slide into the spring. So we're going to take and we're just going to kind of Real easy, clean off the excess on the spring, so that way we don't get grit in there. We want to try to keep this as grit-free as possible. So what we're going to do is just kind of clean up the spring a little bit, go up and down that. All right. And what I'll do is I'll take a uh, a dry uh, patch, and I'll go over this again once I get it wiped down good, because we want to make sure it's nice and dry. You don't want to grab any kind of uh, unspent gunpowder or grit or anything like that. And have it get trapped in the back of the gun. Okay, so we'll grab another patch here. Alright, we'll take a nice dry patch. Take the excess off of there. You're not going to get this perfectly clean unless you soak it in a solvent. So we're not going to worry about that right now. I mean, we got just a very light residue coming off of it. But now we got that all nice and cleaned up. Just kind of slide the spring in. Oops, there you go. Oops. And it doesn't matter, this, it's the same on both ends, so it doesn't matter which way you put that in, you know, which end you put it in. So now, to put it back together, what we want to do is we need to flip your uh, upper receiver upside down. Alright? You're going to take your guide spring. Let's bring it in play here where you can see the receiver real well. You take your guide spring, and right here, in the very back, you'll see there's a little raised spot there. And there's a hole in it. That hole is to grab the end of this spring. But before you do that, you want to grab your um, bolt or your whoops, grab the wrong part. I need my bolt. Here we go. You want to grab your bolt, and on the back of the bolt, right here, is also a hole. All right. That hole is where that spring goes into, and it's captured by that. So you want to go ahead and feed it in there. You got to be careful not to bind it. Okay. 
And you feed it into that little hole in the bottom there. And just very carefully start feeding it into the bolt until you get it to start to drop down. Okay, whoops. Not like I just did, because that will bind it. So we'll start feeding it in. There you go. Now you got your rod into the bolt. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take and hold on to it and just not quite put it all the way down because you've got to get your charging handle into it. Okay, once you get your charging handle in, this is going to slide up into a little crease in the bolt. So what you're going to do is put the bolt down into it. Slide it back some. There we go. And now that's in. So now we got the charging handle in the bolt. Okay, and it slides nice in there without that, without any grit. So after that, we're going to take our um, trigger assembly. Okay, the trigger block. And you're going to see there's two ears on the front of this. Okay, see these two little ears here? Those ears are going to sit up under this little pin right here. There's a pin on either side. So you sit those underneath there. When you push on this, it's going to put it under pressure. So whenever you push down on it, you want to hold tight on it. All right? Then you take your little pin that you had. Oops, let me let that loose there a second. We're going to wipe that pin down so it's nice and clean too. Okay, your little pin that has the slot in it, it said it looked like a screw, but it wasn't really a screw. That's what you're going to need next. So we're going to wipe that down, get any grit off of it so you don't put any grit into the back of the gun. Now, go ahead and push forward on that. Get it up under the ears. Push down in the back, and that pin will captive, captivate this whole thing. So you wiggle that in there, and it slides in, and now you're back together with your trigger assembly. So now that we got the trigger assembly back in, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside for a second. And we're going to pull the actual trigger housing off, all right? And if you notice, we already had one screw that was loosened back here, all right, which allowed you to lift the stock off of the... Uh, upper receiver. So what we're going to do is take a small screwdriver and this front screw, we're going to release it now. you got to be careful when you release this because you're going to have to pick it up and reach up underneath. There's a captive nut on there. And if you lose that nut, you won't be able to put it back together. Okay, so we'll pull this apart here. We'll lift this screw up out of there carefully. Lay it off to the side. Now we'll let that captive nut fall into my hand so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the little captive nut that's going to hold that screw that holds the trigger assembly in. Okay, or I'm sorry, the trigger guard with the trigger itself. Now that'll just lift straight up out. If you look in here, this is your trigger itself. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to wipe that down real good, clean it up. We're going to clean these screws up, and we're going to just put it back together here so that way it's going to be nice and clean and grit free. This will be the easy cleanup here. <laughs> this is the easiest part that you're going to ever see. Wipe it down real nice. Get all that stuff out of there. Now, there we go. Nice and clean and crisp. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go inside here where everything sits. And we're just going to give it a quick wipe down because you're going to get a little bit of powder and residue in there. So you want to get that out of there too. All right? You don't need to use any kind of oil or anything like that in here. Just a quick wipe. All right? So now it's wiped down. We'll flip this back over and we'll put the trigger back in. Okay, so now the trigger and the trigger housing are going to go back in. Slide it in like so. Take my little captive screw that I cap the cap here that I have for my captive screw. Flip it over, and there's a hole that'll fit right into it. Put your finger on the bottom of it. Take the small screw and just put it back in there and get it started. Okay, once you get it started, you keep your finger on there and just screw it down tight. Right. Don't want to go too tight because this is going into a wooden stock, so it can feasibly crack the stock, and you don't want to do that. All right, so now that's back together. So now we're going to go ahead and take the long screw that was in the back side of it. We'll wipe it down and get all the grit off of the thread so it'll grab nice. Okay, let's wipe the other one down while we're here. Okay, get any debris off of them. So now that we got that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the whole uh, upper receiver and barrel assembly. Just keep it upside down like this with the charging handle facing you. Take the stock of the weapon and just lay it across and you'll see that the back end will slide into a little groove that's in the very back here. There's a little groove right here. So slide that back into there 
it will slide right back in and it will lay right down on top of it. Now you got it set in there, it's seated real nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold it upside down and we're going to take our long screw that goes in the back of the trigger housing. Put it in first. That's going to stabilize the stock where it won't go anywhere. Right there. And this way. Just tighten that down. There we go. That stabilizes that. Then you can take your Phillips screw. You can stick it through the back of the stock. Take your Phillips screwdriver and just drive it down. Don't make it too tight. Like I said, you know, it is a wooden stock, so you could feasibly crack that stock and then just damage the gun. You don't want to do that. So just make it snug. Then you have a broad headed screw, which will go up here on the very front. Okay, that'll screw into the very front of your, your trigger housing and your upper receiver assembly. All right, it's nice and tight. Now it's all back together, ready to go. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice and smooth. Yeah, look at that. Now we got a release on the bolt. Bolt lock, bolt release. Nice. Okay. I think we're all done here. Hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully you learned how to... Just keep in mind, now this was not a complete strip and rebuild. This was just a basic tear down, clean up, and put it back together to make sure that it's going to function properly. Alright? Uh... Again, I hope I was helpful to you. I hope you learned something from it. And as always, be well trained, protect your Second Amendment rights, and above all, be safe.